Welcome back. All right, so for this review, I decided to wear my Simpsons jersey. This is from Geeky Jerseys. And, of course, it says Poochie on the back because it's itchy and scratchy. So I was like, i got to put Poochie on the back of that. Anyways, that being said, we're going to go ahead uh, and get into the review, starting with Tampa Bay and the Rangers. Uh, so it's Vasilevsky versus Quick. Uh, there was a post for Fox on an early rush chance. A wide open start to this game. Uh, Nick Paul can't bury one in close. Bolts press at two and a half minutes. Panarin fires one wide as the Rangers press. The shots are four to one for Tampa Bay at five and a half minutes. Uh, Bolts press at nine and a half, but they don't get to the net during that. Uh, Lindgren's denied from the slot. Point has a shot that's caught and held. Good flow, low shot totals because there weren't very many whistles in that first period. Rangers press with four minutes left. Hedman has a shot that's blocked. It's scoreless after one. Second period. Stamkos is denied on a fast break. And then on a rush chance, VC roofs one. Goudreau and Pitlick with the assist at 114. I thought it was a nice goal. Uh, was Vasilevsky caught cheating towards the pass? Sure, but I still thought it was a nice goal. Uh, Rangers then press for another. There's a power play for New York. That's killed off. Shots are five to one for the Rangers at four and a half minutes. Hedman has a blast that deflects out. The Rangers have a two-on-one. That's defended. Uh, Sergachev. So it was a reverse hit by Lafreniere. Sergachev falls awkwardly against the boards, and uh, it looked like he broke his leg. Uh, some or it, it's something equally as painful, and likely just to keep him out just as long. I think he'd been out 17 games. He was coming back tonight. Uh, Lafreniere was not happy either. Like he was upset to see Sergachev get hurt. And I get that. Like, yeah, you're against the other team, but you don't want to see a guy get hurt like that. So it took a while. Uh, Sergachev got stretchered off. I, I don't think he's coming back this season. I'm hoping I'm wrong that we get a news report tomorrow that it's not as bad as it looked. But, yeah, uh, I wouldn't be all that surprised if they've already confirmed he's not coming back for the season. But anyways, uh, so you get back to the action. Hagel to Sorelli. There's a near miss there. Uh, puck to the face of Gustafson, and he left for repairs, and Gustafson came back with the fishbowl on. So this was the time of the game where we saw some injuries. Uh, Lafreniere then gets robbed. Vasilevsky holds. The Rangers protecting the net pretty well. Uh, there's a kick save on a Hagel rush chance, and then at 17.46, Brodzinski gets one that, yeah, Vasilevsky might have wanted to save that one. Kreider and Wheeler with the assist there. With 117 left, the Rangers go to the power play, so that rolls over into the third period with them now up 2-0. Uh, Kreider has a tip shot that saved. Power play's killed off. Hagel with a near miss. It's cleared out after that. The shots are 4-1 to one New York at 4.5 minutes. Kako's denied. Vasilevsky holds. And then, just as the announcers are talking about how sleepy Tampa looks, Hagel must have hurt him because he scores. Buries it from the slot. Chernak and Kucherov with the assists at 5.28. Bolts then press to tie it. Uh, Lafreniere gets denied on a rush because he wasn't allowed to get a goal tonight. Uh, Sorelli fires one high during a 3-on-2 uh, with 4.38 left. The Bolts with a power play. That scaled off. Goalie pull happens with 1.35 left, which allows VC to hit the empty net at 18.59. Goudreau and Trocek with the assists. Makes your final score 3-1. to one. New York Rangers win this one. They go to 32-16-3 with the win. Uh, Tampa Bay 27-19-5 and five with the loss. The Rangers seem to have it back together. Shots on net 6-5 Tampa in the first, 10-4 Rangers in the second, 10-9 Tampa in the third. Final shots 24-20 for the Rangers. Power plays Tampa Bay 0-1, for 1. the Rangers 0-2. for 2. The hits 17 apiece. Vasilevsky saves 21 out of 23. Jonathan Quick 19 saves on 20 shots at the other end. So uh, it ended up being a more entertaining game in the third than I, saw, I thought some of the rest of the game was. Especially that first period. There were long stretches where not a whole lot was happening. All right. Uh, Dallas and Toronto, the game where a lot was happening throughout. It's Wedgwood versus Samsonov. Uh, good early flow. A lot of one and done early on, meaning you get one chance. Team clears it out. Then they get one chance. Team clears it out. Uh, post for Harley is the Stars press. Tavares is a shot that's blocked. Uh, both teams uh, doing a good job of blocking early on. The shots are one apiece at four and a half minutes. Uh, we get a power play for Toronto, and this has been the issue for Dallas lately is their penalty kill, and tonight it became a four-alarm fire. So Nylander scores from Riley at 634. It was a screenshot on a good little cycle there. I was surprised Riley was the only assist on it. Uh, Steele has a net feed. That's blocked. Stars press are kept to the outside. We get a power play for Dallas. The Leafs blocked. They clear. They kill it off. One shot for Dallas. Good kill for Toronto. Uh, Tavares nearly adds one. Then we get a power play for Tampa Bay, and they score. It takes eight seconds. Uh, ben buries a one-timer. Uh, Pavelski and Robertson with the assists of 1452. 
Holmberg then fires one wide on a net drive, and then Dodonov has himself a goal to go put the Dallas Stars ahead 2-1. Delandry and Suter with the assists at 17-23. He wires it from the slot after there was a turnover committed by Toronto at center ice. Uh, Stars press in the final minute. So after the first period, yeah, Dallas is ahead. They look great, but there's two more periods to go. Uh, in the second, Domi fires one wide. Good start for the Leafs. They're leading in shots 2-0, two and a half minutes in. We get a power play for Toronto, and they score on it. Uh, it's Tavares from Nylander at 3 minutes and 40 seconds. So the Stars' penalty kill came into this one, allowing five goals on the last 10 power plays they'd encountered. They didn't kill any of the power plays they encountered tonight. So the Leafs look for the lead. There's too many Leafs on the ice. The Stars with a power play. Uh, that's killed off. Two shots on net for Dallas. Matthews is denied. Wedgwood holds. Stars press, they can't get to the net. The Leafs go to the power play. Again, they're two for two at this point, and then they're three for three. Uh, Matthews puts one in off Lindell from Tavares at 12.37. I'm going to be honest, as soon as the Leafs go to a power play, I grab the Leafs goal magnet tonight. I just knew Dallas, and it's funny too, because the first power play goal by Nylander, hearing Toronto announcers talking about how passive the penalty kill for Dallas is, yeah. So anyways, uh, shots are 14-9 for Toronto with four minutes left. A couple of those shots got taken away before the game was done. Uh, 2.53 left, Dallas with a power play. That's killed off. But yeah, it's 3-2 to two Toronto after two. Third period. Uh, early press by Dallas. McMahon then has a near miss and close. Johnston has a chance. That's caught and held. Marner's denied on a turnover. Shots are 5-3 to three for the Leafs at seven minutes. Glove save on a Nylander rush. Then Dodonov is awarded a penalty shot, and he scores on it at 11.05. But then Toronto comes right back and gets the lead back. At 11.37, it's Marner, who just outweights Wedgwood as he goes in on the net. Uh, Matthews and Nyes with the assists there. And then 20 seconds later, Nylander scores from Tavares, because why not? The goalie pull happens with 3.03 left. Eventually, during the 6-on-5, Dallas does score. It's Wyatt Johnston from Haskinen and Marchment at 18.35, but that's as close as Dallas gets. Toronto wins 5-4. They go to 26-15-8 with the win. Uh, Dallas 31-14-6 with the loss. Shots on net 10-4 Dallas in the first. Both teams had 12 shots in the second. 15-9 Toronto in the third. Final shots 31 apiece. Power plays, Dallas won for four. Toronto scored on all three power plays they had. Uh, hits 36-31 for Toronto. So special teams have been a real help to Dallas most of the year. It absolutely did them in tonight. Uh, Wedgwood, 26 saves on 31 shots, and Samsonov, 27 saves on 31 shots. So just that one shot difference. And for Toronto, again, a huge win. We'll see how they build on it. All right, <clears throat> and the last game of the night, Minnesota and Chicago. This is one of those games I watch so that casual viewers don't necessarily have to, where if you're watching these games, like, this game was fun. I don't know if I want to watch the late game. Maybe I'll watch THG's review of it. Here I am. Uh, this game was was not not an intense battle, really. the the biggest The biggest storyline was Nick Foligno versus Marcus Foligno, really. And both Felinos were stars tonight. Uh, it's Gustafson versus Mrazek. Early jump for the Wild. Kaprizov has a rush that's defended. The Hawks press at four minutes. We get a power play for Chicago. That's killed off halfway through the first period. The shots are two to one for Minnesota. So there you go. Uh, we get. Uh, Post for Sanford as the Hawks get some pressure. They don't get a shot out of it, though. Remember, posts don't count as shots. Lucini hits the post, and then the horn sounds. So he didn't hit the post. Uh, he hit the post first, and then it went off the net camera and right back out. So Lucini gets his second career goal. Uh, Letieri and Duhame with the assist at 1227. And that fourth line for Minnesota, their best line tonight, which is uh, an endorsement for how good that fourth line was, as well as condemnation of the top six players for Minnesota, not bringing their A game tonight. Uh, the wild draw power play, that's killed off. Shots are five to one Minnesota with five minutes left. The Hawks get pinned down. The wild aren't getting very many really good chances at the net though. Uh, 251 left, the wild go back to the power play. That's killed off. It's one nothing Minnesota after one. Second period, early jump for Chicago. And when they got a shot early in that period, they get the Bronx cheer. The shot they had in the first period, yes, singular shot was from center ice. It wasn't really a shot on net. So this is the first time they on purpose take a shot on the net. Uh, things get pushy on hold by Gustafson. The Wild press at two and a half minutes. Mermis ends up hitting a post there. Uh, Donato has a wraparound that's blocked. Reichel misses one high from in close. The Hawks press at six and a half minutes. Korczynski to Radish. There's a near miss there. And then Marcus Foligno has a fight with Ternardi. I have to specify which Foligno so somebody doesn't say, wait, Nick Foligno had a fight with his own teammate? 
Uh, shots are five to four Chicago at the half. Kaprizov uh, with a break and a poke check by Mrazek. So he maybe would have wanted to shoot that a little bit sooner. Um, Hawks press with eight and a half minutes left. Eventually they do tie it. Uh, Felino, yep, Nick Felino gets on the board. Uh, he buries one into an open net on a rush. Kurashev and Radish with the assists at 13.44. Letary then has a chance to tell. There's some pushing, but it's 1-1 after two. And all I can think is, dear Lord, we're going to get overtime. Third period, Hartman can't bury one early. Uh, there's a power play for the Hawks. That's killed off. Uh, Kachuk is then denied on a break. The Hawks press are kept to the outside. Boldy's denied and close. Marcus Foligno with a near miss. And the Wild press after that. And Marcus Foligno gets a goal to answer his brother's goal in the second period. Uh, it's Foligno from Letary and Faber at 10.07. The Hawks do look to respond. Things get pushy on a hold by Mrazek. The Hawks then press, but the Wild doing a good job of blocking. They clear it out. Uh, Blackwell couldn't hit an empty net because it was blocked. Letary with a nice block there. So he had two assists tonight and a nice save. And I still think the players should get credit for saves in that situation. If it's going to go in the net, I think it should be qualified. I don't know how you do it, but come on. you, you got to qualify it as a save. So anyways, uh, goalie pull happens with 229 left. Uh, Nick Foligno had a chance that was held. Uh, the Hawks call a timeout. They're unable to get the tying goal. Your final score is 2-1 to one for Minnesota. They go to 22-23-5 with the victory. Chicago 14-35-2 with the loss. The shots on net, 11-1 Minnesota in the first. 9-8 Chicago in the second. 11-6 Chicago in the third. Uh, Minnesota outshoots Chicago 25-21. Both teams go 0-2 on the power play. The hits, 18-17 Minnesota. Gustafson was good. 20 saves on 21 shots. Mrazek again. Very good season for him. 23 saves on 25 shots at the other end. So... You get the result you expect. The team wins that you would expect to win, but not a pretty game. But that's kind of Chicago hockey now. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about tonight's games. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event that you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.